All right, about to do this, the uh, fuel injector spider again for the second time in four months because apparently that standard brand I had failed. Got the new t-shirt. I love these guys, support them. I also, I like buying t-shirts from other channels that I watch. Thinker Thunker, I got a couple of his t-shirts too. This is the box that the uh, new spider came in. You guys will see that. I don't think I'm gonna shoot a lot of this. Um, because you've seen it already in the other video, but I'll do little clips along the way. I'm gonna take the front passenger seat out, pull the doghouse, all that good stuff, just like last time. Just getting everything out here. It is 11.24 in the morning. Time check. Just wanted to point out I got plenty of room between the wiring harness and this part of the uh, air conditioning system. Apparently people get shorts there if that's rubbing. I can't find if that wiring harness is rubbing anywhere. Uh, it touches the top of the uh, hydro boost there, so I'll double check that. But yeah, that's not a problem. You gotta keep in mind, I have three inch engine, uh, excuse me, body lift spacers, and I lift the engine up two inches. So I've got at least an inch here more, but you can see, I can get two and a half fingers here, almost three fingers uh, right there. So I got plenty of room, all right. The bolts for everything else were 8 mil. That's a bigger one for that hose there. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go pop the engine cover and pull the front seat next. All right, so I just used Dave's thingy here, not to be confused with his other thingy, to depressurize that, but it already was. Uh, and I would just drove this thing a little while ago, uh, so maybe that's telling me that that thing is loose there. And if, So there's, anyhow, that's what's happening. All right, so I pulled off all the connectors, the electrical connectors here so far. Uh, disconnected the PCV going in uh, there. And I'm gonna pull these fuel rails next, and I gotta pull that thing. That'll come off with the bolts for the plenum. And obviously the whole throttle body has to come off. Uh, gotta disconnect those lines up front there in that bracket, that's the tough part. Uh, so we'll just see how it goes. Here's a tip for you. This is one of the nuts that holds the fuel rails into the top of that injector, the spider injection body. Uh, I dropped it. It is not magnetic. Tried to pull it out. I was able to get it out with a screwdriver, but just be careful with that. I guess that's probably aluminum. Odd. All right, a couple bolts to get the throttle body off, and I have to use this bench. I just wanted to show you this. <clears throat> That is Lily St. Cyr. She was a personal friend of mine. This bench was in her apartment. She actually lived in my apartment before I moved in. And this was in her pad, which was in the building next door. The stickers, I put the Art Warrior sticker on, but the decoupage things were put on by the old manager. After she died, uh, he put this stuff on there and clear coated it and he had it in his apartment. Then he died and then it came to me. But I've got a bunch of uh, autographed photos from Lily and handwritten notes. I used to bake her pies and all that. I've been meaning to do a video just on Lily St. Cyr and my relationship with her. She was super cool, but it was a crazy way that she lived, man. That's another story. I'm uh, going to get to this now. All right, so this time I just left the throttle bind and the cables connected to the bracket. My bracket is separated from the tube for the transmission, which actually comes in handy for this. That plenum is going to pop right off right now, and I'll be able to get to the injector next. Uh, my boy Phil called while I was doing this, but I'm going to do a time check in a second here, see how long that took. All right, so that it took an hour to get that out of there. I made another one of these things here for all the bolts, so I know where they go, and uh, i got to pull this out. And I'll tell you what, that number three is definitely seated. You know, that center... Uh, plug there it's in there so if it's if this is the problem then uh, there we go so sorry you didn't catch that but these just are friction fit that's all it is I just have to pull up on them so I'll get them out of there but it's a friction fit there's no snapping there might be a, like a click that goes in when it goes into the steel there on the head 
or whatever that is, your manifold. And uh, but I'm going to get this thing out of there, get the new one in, and put it all back together. So yeah, one hour, taking your time uh, to label things and do it right. That's all it takes. It'll probably take longer to get it back in. But let's get that did and do it right and go slow and not make any more mistakes. If this isn't the thing, then it could be a short somewhere, but I don't think it is. I think it's just going to be this. We'll see. <laughs> All right, so I had to, like, the back ones came out easy. I had to twist these around and get them out, but I don't see any sort of clip system on there. That's the weird thing. But that's what it took, was spinning them a bit, and then somehow they cleared something. A piece of plastic caught there. That number three was actually tough uh, to get out of there. But uh, there's no telling what's wrong with it. Um, maybe there's a way where I can bring it over to Irv and he could run fuel through it or something and see. I don't know. But we're about to put the new one in. All right, new one's in. They're all seated. It's tedious. You have to put this thing on the clip and then force the clip down. These things are pretty stiff, these tubes. You can see on the old one, they were, they were already oriented towards the front. Um, so I don't know, man. I don't like that I had to do that, but you have to do it. There's no other way to do it. They're just, you know, they're hard to move around in there. But, uh, you know, you just push it in. That piece of metal up top here is this piece that you see. That clip seats all the way down into the, the hole. And there's a little clicking sound that you can hear when it goes in. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So I got to put some uh, dielectric grease on that and then wipe this off and reapply that, even though I probably don't really need it, and then uh, put it all back together. It's not even one o'clock yet, and I took like a 10 minute break, so we're doing pretty good. Okay, I think everything's tight and buttoned up. I mean, the cover's not on, obviously. Let's uh, stick the key in the ignition. Oh, I can't, I gotta, let me, let me, how about if I hook up the battery first? That might help. All right, here we go. No engine light. When I drove over to the Johnson's where I got my workshop, I had to get a few things. The engine light came on again. I'm nervous. I don't want to get too excited. I don't feel a miss. I just don't trust myself anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I don't feel that same mist thing, but I feel the engine. I mean, the cover's off. We'll see what happens. I'll drive it around a bit. So it's not even two o'clock yet. Uh, it's 1130, 1230, 1.30. So even if it was two and a half hours, I probably screwed off for 20 or 30 minutes. So it's, it's a two hour job, two and a half hour job if you've done it before, if everything's clean. If you don't disconnect those cables uh, from that bracket for your throttle body, just take the bracket and throttle body out. But remember my bracket for the throttle body where it's normally welded to the tube for the transmission check um, that was 
disengaged or the weld was broken before I came along. So that's helpful. I don't know, man. <laughs> Two minutes and 45 seconds to listen to the engine. There's the old spider. So uh, I guess that's the end of this video for now. We'll see what happens. I got the air cleaner on. Everything's on. Man, it feels like there's something there. But I, like I said, I'm just probably paranoid. I don't know. I hope that's all there was. Anyway, I'm going to put the seat back in, clean everything up. Uh, look, you need a 16 mil wrench for these two nuts right here. The bolt holding that thing down is a 10 mil. You got to pull this back plug wire. Once you take this plastic thing off here, the uh, top of that has a nut on it that's a 5.5 mil. And then you're using 8 and 10 millimeter, like normal and deep sockets for everything else. Down here, da -da 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 -da. no engine light. She lives super smooth. Now she's not the temp yet either. She's getting there. Let her get up the temperature and uh, see what happens. I'll catch you guys next. If there's a problem, I'll tack it on at the end after I say everything I'm about to say now and let you know. It didn't fix it or it did fix it, so we'll see. But be good to one another. Thanks for being here. Now you know. You want to tell me what's happening? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're good <laughs> we had it we had to do the crankshaft sensor relearn again uh because when i came over there was it was showing a misfire again on three and six we're both like scratching our heads but he just revved this sucker with doing that relearn and now it looks like we're golden uh-oh what's that that was one one glitch but it was just uh it was just for that bit. Other than that, you should be good. All right. I think we're going to call it good. <laughs> All right. I think I got it. Something rattling around up here. I don't know what, oh, I see. Yeah, a little piece of metal up here. How about if I pay attention to the road? How about that? That little rattles a piece, a little piece of metal up here on the dash. I apologize. <laughs> so two and a half hours really not a big deal for me to do that I'm kind of impressed with myself uh, but there was a roughness to it and I was pissed it's like what the and when I picked it up the other day you know they had done that engine cleaning they do this they can do this top end of your engine cleaning system thing and I think this is right uh, I thought maybe something happened because of that because when I picked it up it was rougher than it ran when I dropped it off last time so I drove over there and he's like oh he put it in there and we were showing a misfire now my code reader told me a random even though the light went out and his reader was telling him number three and number six now I'm like what the so what he did was he did the crankshaft relearn. Oh, I see it's a it's an Allen wrench up here. It's driving me crazy. All right. So he had to do it twice, and after the second time, we're golden. You guys saw the chart on the computer. So I'm pretty pretty stoked about this it seems like maybe we nailed it and now I have an AC Delco fuel injection spider uh, I just feel better about that mentally um, but it's funny because every little thing now I'm so paranoid of something being not correct and we'll see how it goes 
we'll see how it goes. But uh, I was speaking with Irvin and he told me, he said, look, whenever you're doing this sort of thing, you gotta, if you got a misfire and you replace some parts, even if it has anything to do with the crankshaft sensor, he says it's a good idea to do that, to go through that process again, because it um, things can be off. So by going through that process with the computer, uh, you know, you rev it to like 4,000 RPM, you do that till the fuel shuts off. He's got this whole thing, these directions that come with it. And then that resets this to whatever, all the work that you just did, which made sense for me, because you guys know I've been replacing all kinds of parts. I've replaced all these, all the sensors. <clears throat> so now, hopefully, hopefully, we'll see how it goes, but hopefully everything's dialed now. Thanks again for being here. Uh, I appreciate you guys. And thanks again, Wilson, for the tip on the AC Delco fuel, you know, the spider injection system. If you guys haven't seen that previous video at Rock Auto, if I typed in, you know, 2004 Astro van, it was only showing me the only complete spider assembly I could get was either remanufactured or the only new one was the standard brand, which is what I had already put in it. Wilson told me to go and look and type in 1999. So I did that, and sure enough, for the 1999, it showed the modern version, you know, the improved version with the injectors at the ends of each uh, tube. And it also sold the same standard brand with the same part number. The 1999 part number and the 2004 part number were the same, which told me that the AC Delco part they were selling was gonna fit in this. The only thing about it was, and you'll notice, I think I showed you in the video, when it comes, it comes with the tubes oriented in the opposite direction. So you gotta kinda of spin them around and the clip that's inside there, you gotta force everything onto the clip and then get it in there. Versus the way it comes, uh, if the standard brand it comes with all the, all the little tubes facing in the correct orientation already. One less step that way. So we'll just pop it over my client's house to see what's going on over here. And uh, yeah, it's gonna rain here the next couple days. Today was my only one sunny day and the park came this morning, so I was able to just knock that out. Anyhow, once again, thanks again for being here. I'll catch you guys next time. Uh, be good to one another, bye.